Good evening. We are going to continue Black Beauty by Anna Sewell. Chapter 15 is called The Old Hostler. And a hostler was someone who was paid to take care of horses at, at an inn. Um, we don't have those today because we, we don't have horses that we drive to inns. After this, it was decided that my master and mistress would pay a visit to some friends who lived about 46 miles from our home, and James was to drive them. The first day, we traveled 32 miles. There were some long, heavy hills, but James drove carefully and so thoughtfully that we were not at all harassed. He never forgot to put the drag as we went downhill, nor to take it off at the right place. He kept our feet on the smoothest part of the road, and if uphill was very long, he set the carriage wheels a little across the road so as not to run back and gave us a breathing. All of these little things help a horse very much, particularly if he gets kind words into the bargain. We stopped once or twice on the road and just as the sun was going down, we reached to the stop where we were to spend the night. We stopped at the principal hotel, which was in the marketplace. It was a very large one. We drove under an archway into a long yard at the further end of which we were in stables and coach houses. Two hostlers came to take us out. The head hostler was a pleasant, active little man with a crooked leg and a yellow striped waistcoat. I never saw a man unbuckle a harness so quickly as he did. And with a pat and a good word, he led me to the long stable with six or eight stalls in it and two or three horses. The other man brought Ginger. James stood by while we were rubbed down and cleaned. I was never cleaned so lightly and quickly as by that little old man. When he had done, James stepped up and felt me over as if he thought I could not be thoroughly done. But he found my coat as clean and as smooth as silk. Well, he said, I thought I was pretty quick and our John quicker still, but you do beat all I ever saw for being quick and thorough at the same time. Practice makes perfect, said the crooked, crooked little hostler. T'would be a pity if it didn't. Forty years practice and not perfect? Ha <laughs> ha, that would be a pity. And as for being quick, why bless you, that is only a matter of habit. If you get into the habit of being quick, it's just as easy as being slow. Easier, I should say. In fact, it doesn't agree with my health to be hulking over a job twice as long as it need to take. Bless you, if I couldn't whistle... I couldn't whistle if I could crawled all over my work as some folks do. You see, I've been about horses ever since I was 12 years old, in hunting stables and racing stables and being small, you see, I was a jockey for several years. But at the Greenwood, you see, the turf was very slippery and my poor lark spur got a fall and I broke my knee. So, of course, I was no more use there, but I could not live without horses. Of course I couldn't. So I took to the hotels, and as you can see, it's a downright pleasure to handle an animal like this. Well-bred, well-mannered, well-cared for, bless ye. I can tell how a horse is treated. Give me the handling of a horse for 20 minutes, and I'll tell you what sort of groom he has had. Look at this one. Pleasant, quiet, turns about just as you want him, holds his feet up to be cleaned out, anything you please. And then you'll find another fidgety and fretty, won't move to the right or starts to cross the stall, tosses up his head as soon as you come near him, lays his ears, seems afraid of you, or else squares about you with his heels. Poor things, I know what sort of treatment they've had. If they are timid, it makes them start or shy. If they are high metal, it makes them vicious or dangerous. Their tempers are mostly made when they are young. Bless you, they are like children. Train them up in a way they should go, as the good book says, and when they are old, they will not depart from it. If they have a chance, that is. I like to hear you talk, said James. That's the way we lay it down at our home, at our master's. Who is your master, young man, if it be a proper question? I should judge he's a good one from what I see. He's Squire Gordon of Birtwick Park, the other side of Beacon Hills, James said. Ah, so, so, I've heard tell of him. Fine judge of horses, ain't he? The best rider in the country. I believe he is, said James, but he rides very little now since the poor young master was killed. 
Ah, oh, poor gentleman, I read all about it in, in the paper at the time. A fine horse killed too, wasn't there? Yes, said James. He was a splendid creature, brother to this one, and just like him. Pity, pity, said the old man. Twas a bad place to leap, if I remember. A thin fence at the top, a steep bank downstream, wasn't it? No chance for a horse to see where he's going. Now, I am for bold riding as much as any man, but still there are some leaps that only very knowing old huntsman has any right to take. A man's life and a horse's life are worth more than a fox's tail. At least I should say they ought to be. During this time, the other man had finished ginger and had brought our corn, and James and the old man left the stable together. Stay tuned tomorrow for chapter 16 called The Fire.